Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono white life gain deck full of life gain synergies, featuring four copies of Ajani Strength of the Pride for Mana Planeswalker that starts out at 5 loyalty. Often we're going to use the minus 2 ability right away, which makes a 2 2 Ajani Sprite Mate token, which is essentially an Ajani Sprite Mate in token form, so a 2 2 creature that gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter whenever we gain life. And we've got a lot of ways to repeatedly gain life in this deck to grow our Pride Mate tokens. And of course, Ajani's plus 1 ability also helps us gain life. Life, since we gain life equal to the number of creatures we control plus the number of planeswalkers we control so that's a great way of growing the pride mates and then the zero ability basically says if we have 35 or more life we get to exile a Jani as well as each creature and each artifact if the opponent controls so that's a nice one-sided sweeper to have access to in this mono white life gain deck which otherwise runs a ton of creatures where sweeper effects would not be very good then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we also have a bunch of angel synergies featuring four copies of Bishop of Wings, two mana for a 1 4 that says whenever an angel enters the battlefield under our control, we gain four life, so that's a ton of life gain. And whenever an angel we control dies, we also get to make a 1 1 white spirit creature token with flying, so that makes our expensive angels a bit more removal and sweeper resistant, which is nice. And then to go alongside our Bishop of Wings, of course, we need some Angels. We've got four copies of Angel Vitality, three mana for a 2-2 Flyer. And whenever we gain life, we gain that much life plus one instead. So great with repeatable life gain. And Angel Vitality gets plus two plus two as long as we have 25 or more life. So it's not too difficult to get up to 25 life. If we curve Bishop of Wings into turn three Angel Vitality, we'll gain five life. Thanks to the four life gain from Bishop and one from Angel Vitality, which is enough for the Angel Vitality to be a 4-4 if we didn't take any other damage and then we also have the full place of resplendent angel which is one of the better cards in this deck as it has a ton of built-in synergy three mana for a three three flyer that says at the beginning of each end step if we gained five or more life this turn we get to make a four four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance so this can get out of hand very quickly especially combined with bishop of wings since the dream start in this deck is to have one of our one drops followed by a bishop of wings into a resplendent angel a resplendent angel will gain four life thanks to the bishop and any of our one drops will gain us one additional life to get us up to five to make an angel token right away leaving us with a board state of a 3-3 resplendent angel a 4-4 token as well as triggering the bishop with the token a second time essentially gaining us at least eight life so we'll have a nice padded life total and a very powerful board presence that's also a little bit sweeper resistant thanks to the bishop of wings so that's the dream start we're looking for but of course there's many other ways of gaining five life in this deck one of them just activating the resplendent angel's ability for six mana giving it plus two plus two and the lifelink until end of turn making it into a five five flyer with lifelink which will easily gain us the five life required to make another four four angel token and then last but not least we also have two copies of lyra dawnbringer five mana for a five five angel with flying first strike and lifelink and other angels we control get plus one plus one and have lifelink so great alongside our Angel Vitality and especially Resplendent Angel, since that's going to make it very easy for us to gain 5 life in one turn, to make another Angel token with the Resplendent Angel. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we mentioned the 1-drops gaining us 1 life. So we've got 4 copies of Leonin Vanguard, 1 mana for a 1-1 one, one Cat Soldier, and at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we control 3 or more creatures, the Vanguard gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, and we also gain 1 life and repeatedly gaining one life in this deck is very valuable it helps us grow the pride mates if we have a bishop of wings in play one life plus four life from the bishop equals five to get a token from the resplendent angel if we have an angel vitality in play we gain two life instead of just one helps us grow the tokens from a Jani. and finally we also have two copies of dawn of hope which lets us draw cards whenever we gain life if we pay two mana so if we can repeatedly gain life we can draw multiple cards per turn with this so a ton of synergy with the leonin vanguard of course, the Vanguard requires us to have three creatures in play before we can gain life, which is why the other one drop in the deck is not Fountain of Renewal, but instead Soulmander. Fountain of Renewal is a bit more resistant against removal spells, but Soulmander has two distinct advantages in this deck. One of them is that it's a creature for Leonin Vanguard, which requires a critical mass of creatures. And then the other one is that it synergizes a bit better with a Jani Sprite Mate, since if we curve a turn 1 Soulmander into a turn 2 a Jani Sprite Mate, we can tap or Soulmander to gain 1 life, which will grow the Pride Mate. Instead, if we have a Fountain of Renewal on turn 1, it's going to trigger on our upkeep, and then if we play a turn 2 a Jani Sprite Mate, it's no longer going to help grow the Pride Mate on that turn, so we basically lose out on one counter, which can definitely start adding up. And the same goes, of course, for the tokens from a Jani Strength of the Pride. 
So that's why I prefer Soulmander in this deck. Then at 2 mana we've got our 4 copies of a Janny Sprite Mate, which can grow very large very quickly. We've got our 4 Bishop of Wings with our Angel Synergies, and then 2 copies of Dawn of Hope as a powerful card draw engine. So whenever we gain life we can pay 2 mana to draw a card, and of course there's a ton of ways in this deck to gain life. And if we don't have anything in play we can always spend 4 mana to make a 1-1 wide soldier creature token with a lifelink, which will also help us draw cards with the first ability, and if we're facing a control deck with a ton of removal and sweeper effects, being able to keep making those 1-1 tokens can also be game winning. Then at 3 mana we've got a playset of Angel Vitality and Resplendent Angel, as well as a full playset of Prison Realm as our removal spell of choice, can exile any creature or planeswalker from the opponent, and when Prison Realm enters the battlefield we also get to scry one, so it gives us a little bit of card selection, helping us dig for those cards that we need. And then at 4 mana we've got 4 copies of a Gianni Strength of the Pride, it's not all that bad to draw multiples, since you can usually minus 2 the first one and then play another one and start making more tokens or gaining a life, and it's also not too difficult to get up to 35 life with cards like Angel Vitality, doubling the life gain from Vanguard and Soulmander, cards like Bishop of Wings gaining a ton of life, and of course Lyra Dawnbringer giving all our Angels lifelink. It's uh, pretty trivial in this deck to get up to 35 life, turning Ajani into a powerful sweeper effect as well that the opponent might not expect. And then last but not least we've got our two copies of Lyra Dawnbringer as a very powerful curve topper in this deck with a ton of synergy built in. Would even like to add a third copy in the deck, but it is still a 5 mana card which is a bit expensive and she is legendary so there is some uh, diminishing returns to having multiples but yeah if you can find room for a third copy go for it and then our mana base is 22 basic planes alongside two copies of Zalfir and Void, letting us scry one when it enters the battlefield, since we had a bit of room for a couple colorless lands, and I thought that uh, Zalfir and Void was the best one, could also go for like Blast Zone, Field of Ruin, there's a couple other lands you could consider, but I like the card selection that the Void provides, since our deck doesn't have a ton of card draw outside of Dawn of Hope, so sometimes we just need to make sure we can draw the right cards at the right time, and Prison Realm and Void can help us with that as well. So yeah, that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable looking hand, missing the second planes for the bishop, but I'm sure we'll find one eventually. Alright, there we go. And I think we can probably lead with the Soulmander here actually, since that's gonna grow the Pride Maid next turn right away. As opposed to the Leonin Vanguard. Although the Leonin Vanguard means we can attack for one extra damage in two turns. It's close, I think I'll go with the Soulmander. And then next turn we can go Pride Mates, activate Soulmander, which gets the Pride Mate out of shock range. Or I can just shock the Soulmander, fair enough. Alright, so now we can play the Pride Mate, and then next turn go Bishop into Vanguard, which will grow the Pride Mate. So we don't want to play the Void, otherwise we're going to be unable to go Bishop into Vanguard. But playing the Void would have been okay since we were fine bottling additional lands at this point. I have a second shock, wow, that's brutal. Yeah, that second shock is gonna make a pretty big difference this game. So yeah, just gotta go Bishop into Vanguard. Could have been attacking with a 3-3 Prime Mate, but now instead uh, we'll just have to wait for a Johnny Strength of the Pride to make some more Prime Mates. Opponent adapts the Growth Chamber Guardian, gets the second one. Eventually the Pride Mates will become bigger than the Growth Chamber Guardian, but for now it's pretty effective against our Bishop of Wings. Opponent stays back on defense, alright. So, trying to play the more controlling role, but that's okay, since we can definitely go over the top with our various life gain and angel synergies. So I could Ajani, make a Pride Mate, it's gonna become a 3-3. But then the Growth Chamber Guardian can threaten our Jani. Alternatively, I could like wait and then next turn play Vanguard, which will trigger and make our Pride made up to a 4-4, which at least trades for the Growth Chamber Guardian. I guess drawing another Jani helps. Alright, so now our decision's pretty straightforward. So now I can also just double block the Growth Chamber Guardian with Pride Mate and Bishop, for example. Minus a Jani again, play another Jani plus Vanguard, and then we'll start getting multiple counters on our Pride Mate every turn. Oof, Domri. Domri's pretty good though. Let's them fight the Pride Mate right now. Still has damage marked on it, so they can't really attack with the Growth Chamber Guardian unless they want to trade. And Putin decides to stay back. Alright, so opponent had some good draws there, the double shock, the Domri, 
Let's see if we can fight through all that. Just gonna make another pride mates. A pure soul can inspire others. I protect those who cannot protect themselves. Our true strength lies in our friendships. So now I've got a bunch of four fours. And I'll only start growing from here. So hopefully no hasty dragons killing our Ajani here. Maybe a Domri's ambush killing Ajani, who knows. It's gonna be a lava coil killing the Pride Mage just before it gets out of range. Come and, destroy. and a Gruul Spellbreaker. Alright. And our opponent decides to make it bigger. And the 5-4 attacks the Jani. I think I'm just chomping with the Bishop of Wings here. Since we want to keep the Leon in Vanguards to grow the Pride Mates, and this 4-4 is going to become a lot bigger than 4-4 next turn. If we draw an Angel, we'll maybe regret this, but I think saving a Jani is pretty important. Alright, there's Respond to Angel, which would have been pretty awesome alongside the Bishop. But uh, so it goes. If we can save a Jani here, then the uh, Respondent Angel will still be able to make additional Angels pretty easily. So let's move to combats. Don't really have any attacks. Since we just want to play defense and protect our Jani. Opponent can cash in Domri to find our Respondent Angel, but that's okay. Gets the third Growth Chamber Guardian. And those Domri fights, or just plus. Because if we draw land, then the Respondent Angel also threatens to become a 5 5 with Lifelink. Opponent attacks with everyone at the Jani. So if they have a combat trick here, let's say the plus 4 plus 2 and Trample, Collision Colossus, we could get kind of destroyed for making some blocks. Probably can't realistically save a Jani here with these attacks. And this would still kill. The Spellbreaker even through Collision Colossus. Like, I could trade and then chump, save a Jani. I think this is fine. My hope for peace is gone. And what's the follow up? Another Guardian. And those Domri fights. Takes out Respond to Angel. Alright. So we finally got rid of Domri. And we still have a double Vanguard, double Pride Maid in play. So we're definitely favored with this board state, but anything could happen. So is it time to start attacking? It might be. I don't really want to trade Leon in Vanguard for a 2-2 Growth Chamber Guardian. Since these Vanguards are pretty valuable. But maybe we can just smash with everyone here and then opponent's taking how much? 16 damage? Yeah, let's go face. And of course, if they trade now, they don't get to get the fourth Growth Chamber Guardian. Opponent takes it all. I guess we'll keep land in hand. Doesn't really matter. And we padded our life total nicely at 27, so... We're not really in any immediate risk of dying. Cards we don't want to see out of the opponent are cards like Rekindling Phoenix, which just blocks forever and we need to find a Prison Realm to answer. Any kind of mana sink, like uh, Skargon Hellkites, for example, could be annoying since that can take out our Leonin Vanguards, but otherwise we can handle most ground creatures. So normally I would save the Prison Realm for some problematic Planeswalker or like a Rekindling Phoenix, but now we can probably just kill our opponents if we get rid of a blocker. So we'll attack with everyone, and our opponents at two, so they'll take Exanxes here even if they chum block. Alright. Alright, sweet. I managed to beat Gruul and they had a pretty decent draw as well, so not bad, not bad. On to the next one.
Don't have any one drops, don't have any angels. But it has potential, like if we draw any one drop or an angel, we're in good shape. If we draw a Jani, we're fine. So it seems functional enough that we can keep. And turn one. If we play the void, then we can play bishop on two, which we might want to do if we draw an angel. So I think also lead with planes. And we did pick up a Jani, which is nice. Up against Simic, so it looks like maybe the escape shift deck, yep, Field of the Dead. Alright, Soulmander a bit late to the party, but we can still play it on turn three alongside maybe a bishop, which again means we can play the void. So probably just play Pride Mate here. It's gonna be a small hydroid crisis. And Prison Realm. Alright, so we'll go Soulmander plus Bishop. Don't have any attacks right now, but that's fine. So, probably want to save the Prison Realm to answer a bigger crisis. Maybe a Teferi Time Raveler. And then hopefully we'll draw an Angel soon. In the meantime, we've got a Jani. Alright, there's Teferi. So that's probably bouncing the Pride Mate. Bouncing the Pride Mate, not as bad as bouncing a token from a Jani Strength of the Pride. But yeah, the fairy's pretty good at kind of resetting a big Pride Mate. And we're gonna hang back with Krasis, makes sense. If we play a Jani Strength of the Pride, we can make a token, which we can grow right away, and the Krasis doesn't kill a Jani. So that seems reasonable. Since ultimating a Jani could definitely be a way to win this game if they make a bunch of zombies with Escape Shift since we don't have the angels to pressure them in the air right now. Yeah, it seems fine. And then we can void and dig for angels, basically. I protect those who cannot protect themselves. Our true strength lies in our friendships. So let's see if they have the scape shift here. They still need a second green source. There it is. Makes the first zombie of many, I'm sure, grow. So they could grow into double forest into a scape shift, although maybe they tapped their mana slightly awkwardly, because I don't know if they have three basic forests in their deck. All right, and gets an island instead. Does trigger field of the dead twice, so they might not have the scape shift in hand. Just contents making two zombies. And the crisis is probably gonna pressure a Jani here since they have plenty of zombies to protect the fairy now. So we'll have to decide whether we want to deal with Teferi or deal with uh, Krasis. I don't want to hurt you. Make sure to grow the Pride Mates. Just a land for now. So you can go Pride Mate plus Prison Realm this turn, which seems decent. And what do we Prison Realm? Could just be Teferi. Although then we'll lose a Jani, which is also pretty important. It's a close call. I think I'll go with the Krasis still. Just get that flyer out of the way so we can leverage our Jani for a bit longer. Angel of Vitality seems good. Alright, so we can plus. This Pride Mate can become a 5-5. I think we'll just chill for now. Since I don't want to trade the token. I don't think. End of turn root, making more zombies. Being able to play it thanks to Teferi's static ability. Alright, well, hopefully their last card is not a escape shift. And uh, we can try and protect our Jani to Ultima to sweep up all these zombies. That's more like it. Because that's also part of our game plan. All right, they do have the escape shift. They did not go for an end of turn escape shift, so they could get punished if we manage to ultimate our Jani here. They also didn't float any mana before escape shifting, so they probably don't have another spell in hand they want to cast. 
So, let's see. Next turn we get to play Angel Vitality. Gains 5 life when it enters the battlefield, thanks to Bishop and its own ability. Soul Mander will gain 2, so does that give us enough life to ultimate a Jani? We might be a couple points short. And they could also be attacking a Jani here, for all we know. Alright, so our opponent's got a pretty sizable zombie army, one can say. But sadly, I don't think we have quite enough life to ultimate the Sejani. And they could also be attacking here if they really wanted to. They would lose two zombies for free. Alright, they decide not to. I guess I forgot about uh, Soulmender end of turn here, gaining us one more life. Is that enough? So Angels 5, Soulmenders 2. Oh man. Are we going to be one life point short? I think we are. I can also play the Dawn of Hope, but then I won't have the mana to actually draw a card and do anything useful. And I can't imagine there's a better draw than Angel Vitality in the spots to try and ultimate a Jani that we can draw towards with Dawn of Hope and then activate Soulmender. So yeah, sadly I think we're going to be one life point short of uh, sweeping up the board here. So close, yet so far away. Soulmander gets us up to 34, and yeah, we need 35 life to ultimate this Ajani. That stings. I guess we can plus, but that's not going to help us. Because we're just going to die to these zombies. Well, that was a close one. Opponent did probably play a bit recklessly here, not going for the end of turn scape shift since they had the ferry in play. So if they played perfectly, we probably didn't have a chance to begin with. But it still goes to show that, uh, yeah. This is one way to win the matchup, the other way to win the matchup is just to have enough flyers and kind of pressure them early, get them low with maybe an Ajani Sprite mate, and then use our angels to kind of finish the job, hope they don't have a giant Hydroid Crisis as a blocker. But yeah, close one. Minus 27, but uh, minus 27 doesn't tell the entire story here. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and here we kind of see the issue with having multiple Donophobes, is that they don't really do much in multiples. And we also don't have any way of triggering the Pride Mates, I think this is a mulligan, sadly. Alright, this is better. And what do we put on the bottom? I kind of like keeping double bishops, since that's one way of triggering the Resplendent Angel, even if we miss a land drop for a turn. So maybe just bottom a Jani, since we can just win with Angel Beatdown instead. Yeah, why not? This also doesn't rely on drawing two lands. Another Angel Vitality, so... If we can hit a third land drop, we'll be in great shape. We can also go Bishop into Angel Vitality into Resplendent Angel, which will also gain us five life right away for Resplendent Angel. Opponent on what looks like blue-eyed flyers. So they're not gonna have uh, much in the way of interaction, and... We can probably go over the top with our flyers. So three mana, could be the Empyrean Eagle. It's gonna be a venerated Loxodon instead. All right, fair enough. Drawn on the Jani anyway. So yeah, I think the place Angel Vitality gain five and next turn Resplendent Angel, which will also gain five with Bishop of Wings and Angel Vitality. And we should have enough life gain here with all these bishop triggers to offset the damage we're taking in the meantime. Attacks with all, we'll take it. Alright, time for Resplendent Angel. And I guess I'll attack, why not? And 
And of course, the Angel token also gained 5 life with the Angel Vitality, so we're pretty close to having a 4-4 Angel Vitality here. Sky Marcher. Is this a Conclave Tribunal for Respondent Angel? Sure looks like it. It is. Alright. Goes after Respondent Angel. I have to assume... More Bishops of Wings. So it's somewhat tempting to play Bishop before playing Angel Vitality. I'm not sure if that's the way to go. If we play another Angel Vitality, we gain 5. Angel becomes a 4-4. Four, four. We'll have another 4-4 four, four Flyer. Although, then we also miss out on life gain for Ajani later. It's close. I guess we even gain 6 life here with 2 Angels of Vitality. And does this attack or stay back? I think it attacks. I'll keep this back in case we want to chump the Loxodon. Since we want to keep our life total high, we've got more bishops coming up anyway. So they've got one card left in hand. Looks like another Convo card here. Ooh, Sephara. Yeah, Sephara's gonna be hard to beat. So now we're pretty all in on finding Prison Realm, or I guess a Jani could ultimate. But then we also need to be at 35 life, which is not gonna be trivial. So does that mean we jump with a bishop to save for life or keep it in case we find more angels? I think I'll take it. Could also trade for one of our flyers, but I think we want to keep those. Alright, so I can go a double bishop of wings, set up for an angel, gain a ton of life if we do. I could play a Jani, make a pride mate token that doesn't accomplish much. Yeah, I think we just go a double bishop. Hope to survive a while. If we trade away an Angel, we'll also get a bunch of Spirit Tokens, so that's another reason to wait until we play multiple Bishops before we trade away the Angel, so we get more Spirit Tokens to then hopefully protect our Ajani to try and ultimate. If we draw Lara Dawnbringer, having more Angels in play is also beneficial. So yeah, I guess we just trade for the Loxodon at this point. Maybe trade with the Angel Vitality, since it's not going to stay a 4 4 for long, but the additional life gain could be useful with the Ajani trying to ultimate. This one's close. I think we need to keep this one since next turn these 3-3s three might start attacking us otherwise. So I'll trade here. And then hope to draw some angels basically. Alright, so... How about a Jani plus? How much life are we gaining? Quite a bit. 6, 7, 8, 9. Plus 1, 10. Up to 26. Can okay, maybe chum block with the spirits, and then if we find any way of gaining life, we could uh, ultimate next turn, which is, I think, the best way to win this game. Yeah, let's go for it. Could be holding a spell pierce. No spell pierce. So, no good attacks. Come on, Ajani. You have to save us here. Spectral Sailor, another flyer. And a Healer Sock. Our opponent probably doesn't want to attack with Sephara, since otherwise we could trade. But yeah, if we draw an Angel here, it's probably game over for the opponent. So they're sending those, so we can easily block a 3-3 with a 4-4. I could chump Tomic. Could also let Ajani take 5, since we just need him alive to use a 0 ability. That's also an option. Since I don't want to have to chump if we don't have to. I guess I'll just chump the 5-6 then and take 4. Save the spirits for next turn. Seems okay. Zelfern Void. So I'll play the Void first, then we can Dawn of Hope, gain life, draw a card. Hope to find something useful here. Find your inner strength. Another Jani? Alright, alright, that's great. So no attacks, and now, even if they kill the one in play, we can still play another Jani 
to wipe the board. And that should leave us in a pretty good position. Opponent's just going face now. Maybe realizing they just need to get our life total low. But uh, we can still plus a Jani and then play another Jani to gain a bit more life. So let's see. We'll start with kind of the free blocks. So how much damage are we taking? This is probably still going to be a 4-4 after we're done blocking. So right now we're taking 10 damage down to 25. So it's relatively safe. This will stay a 4-4 so it doesn't die. I guess we might not be able to gain enough life. So what if I jump here too? Now I'm taking 6 down to 29. I can plus the first Sajani, which gains me how much life? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I guess that works. Alright. There's also a different line where we can actually like chum block with our angel. So it dies and we get a bunch of spirit tokens, which gives us more creatures for a Johnny. I think this is okay. Soulmander, so play Soulmander first. Plus a Johnny. Could have also drawn a card instead of uh, playing the Soulmander to gain a bit more life. Let's hope this works. If they have a spell pierce or another counter spell, we could be in trouble. And let's exile all those creatures. And yeah, we can start attacking now. Turn the corner nicely, and our opponent scoops it up. Wow, what a game. Pretty interesting uh, situation there, trying to stay at 35 with a Jani. Alright, we're on the draw, and we're pretty close to having kind of the perfect start here with a bishop into Resplendent Angel. All we're missing is a one drop to gain one life, but we'll definitely keep. And yeah, there's a chance we draw turn one, otherwise could also play the second bishop before playing Angel to guarantee getting that uh, token right away. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn one Breeding Pool into Grazer. Well... Looks like uh, the escape shift decks are pretty popular today. Ooh, another resplendent angel. So now we can also go angel vitality first, which will gain us five life if we play angel into the bishop, thanks to the one extra life gained. So we can trigger the angel right away. Or we can just play the Resplendent Angel first, since that means we can attack for 3. I guess this will attack for 4. So yeah, that's probably better. Vanguards. A little bit late to the party would have allowed us to make an Angel token right now, but I'm not going to complain here. Still have a pretty nice start. All these flyers will help us fly over any potential zombies our opponent makes. Alright. The ferry sets us back a little bit. A land would be nice, so we can still play the vanguard. And an angel. Another angel instead. <laughs> well, this hand gets punished pretty badly by the ferry. Any argument for going bishop into a Leonin vanguard here? I don't think so. Now I think I'm actually playing resplendent angel, because that way if we do draw a land we get to go vanguard into a second angel and make two tokens end of turn. But we're definitely getting slowed down here by this Teferi. Don't worry, I got this. Alright, there's a land, that's good. So you get to go vanguard into resplendent angel. And yeah, gain four, gain one more. This attacks the ferry, I think. Could attack with a bishop, because they might jump with the arboreal grazer. I guess that's worth it. They could also escape shift at instant speed, and then this gets eaten, in which case that could be bad. 
Hmm. Yeah, they can have their Teferi to loyalty. So let's see what they do. Chumps with the Grazer. And make some tokens. Alright, so we're at 42. They go Roots. This is their last card, Scape Shift. It sure is. Alright, let's see how we deal with how many zombies. That's a lot of zombies. Alright. So... Four Field of the Dead. So this is 40 zombies coming up. I don't think our four blockers are going to be quite enough here, sadly. No, I am not making this up as so yeah, stumbled a little bit, didn't have the one drop on turn one for the completely perfect start. And uh, yeah, Teferi slowed us down quite significantly. Otherwise, uh, we would have been able to make that Angel token a turn sooner, and pressure the opponent's life total a lot more. But so it goes. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand seems okay, a bit land light, but hopefully we'll draw some additional lands. Prison Realm can also help us grind to a fourth land. And if we find any cheap creature, this hand's also pretty decent since we'll get to grow the Pride Mates. So cheap creatures are good, lands are good. More Janis, not quite. Should have attacked for one first in case they had a disfigure and wanted to disfigure the vanguard for some reason. Since the pride mate is more valuable. Alright, no target for this prison realm. I'm not gonna play it out just for the scry one, but... At least we're not missing our land drops. Moment of craving to kill the pride mates. Alright. It's not ideal, but our hand's pretty grindy with double Hajani here. So we're okay playing a longer game. Triple Swamp. And a Doom the Center. Alright, maybe some sort of zombie deck. I don't really care about this Doom the Center, but I think I just want to scry into a land here with the Prison Realm. Alright, land is good. So next turn we can play a Johnny minus. Four mana. What is this? Reassembling Skeleton. So a bit of Graveyard Synergy and a Walking Corpse. Let's play Johnny. Let's see if they have some removal to clear a path here. It's going to be a Bone Dragon. Pretty cool animation that you don't get to see very often. So we can easily Prison Realm the Bone Dragon. It's a pretty clean answer. A Walking Corpse gets in for two. Don't think we block. I mean, I guess I could block and make another token. But we get to attack if we don't block and just plus a Jani to gain life. Since I was probably going to Prison Realm the Bone Dragon anyway, we did draw the land. So Lara Dombringer is also an option now. Which would also trigger the Leonian Vanguard. So that could also be reasonable. We have a backup Ajani in case they kill Lyra anyway. I think it's worth it. And of course making sure to play a creature before plossing Ajani. And I don't think we're interested in attacking since our pride mate's gonna be a bit more valuable than this Bone Dragon in a couple turns. Right, Death Baron 
the Zombie Lord, giving plus one plus one and death touch to zombies and skeletons, including the reassembling skeleton and the bone dragon here, but still not big enough to attack Pastor Lara. Alright, so now we've got quite a few options. I think minusing this Ajani, playing another Ajani plusing could be one. We could just cash in Ajani, play Prison Realm on the Bone Dragon, start attacking with Lara, grow the Pride Mates. That's also reasonable. I think I'll go with that. We don't have to exile the Bone Dragon, but if they play another Death Baron, it could be annoying and uh, getting rid of the Flyer also helps us protect our future Ajanis. So we'll make another Pride Mates. And the Pride Mates are staying back for now, since the opponent's creatures have Death Touch as well. But Lara's doing a pretty good job of gaining a life, and then maybe at some point we can Ajani, use a zero ability to exile the opponent's creatures and attack for the win. Ooh. It's gonna be Liliana untouched by death. They've got two zombies in play, so not quite enough to kill Lara Dombringer here. But they could take out the Vanguard. Oh, they're overwhelming, aren't they? And I think I'm fine attacking Liliana here instead of going after the opponent's life total, since we're just gonna wipe the board next turn with the Jani anyway, and then um, it doesn't matter if they're at 14 or if they're at uh, 9. So yeah, let's uh, attack, and then what am I doing with this Ajani? I could also just keep it in hand to kind of keep it as a surprise. Because if we play a Jani right now, then our opponent is gonna do everything they can to try and kill a Jani. They could have some Planeswalker removal, who knows. I think we just keep it in hand, probably fine playing out a land. And after turn we can Soulmander. And grow the Pride Mates. Cast down. Well, that's unable to kill a Lara Dombringer. Going after the Soulmander. Since I guess their opponent's got these Death Touchers that can hold off the Pride Mates, but not for long. No attacks, and now we can just Ajani. And attack for win. First strike happens before regular damage. So the Pride Mates also pick up an additional counter before they deal damage, thanks to Lyrad. So that's also an interaction to keep in mind. Sometimes the opponents will mess up and block Pride Mates thinking they're one smaller. All right, sweet. That's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.